Hi everyone, so we're just with Sharon down here at the Woolly Monkeys and we're just going to have a catch up on how everyone is today. Uh, which group have we got here? This is Lavar's group, so a group of six monkeys. Uh, Lavar is our dominant male here, he's actually our oldest woolly monkey here at the park. He's going to be 30 this summer. So Lavar's going to be 30 this summer? Yeah, so he's, um, he's still looking pretty good for his age. Um, woolly monkey life expectancy in captivity is around 30. Um, but he's still sort of leading this group really well. Um, he's got one of Junior is his sidekick. Junior's only six, he's going to be seven soon, so he's stepping out of that adolescent age. And the bar is teaching him the ropes and how to um, yeah, sort of be a, an efficient male within a, a sort of, yeah, very well run bully group. Lovely. Um, and so, if our visitors were to come in and want to spot Lavar in this group, how would we be able to tell him? Um, here's Lavar now, if you can see him. So he is the, the largest boy at the moment. Junior is quickly catching up with him. Um, so he's quite a stocky woolly monkey. Him. You can just see. Um, he doesn't like to make eye contact. So this is quite common for, <laughs> for, for the males. Um, so yeah, he's a very sort of chunky boy. Um, very grey in colouring. He's got then some dark hair on, around his head. Um, yeah, and he's very... It'd be very unusual for Lavar to actually interact with the visitors. So as a dominant male, he takes life quite seriously when it comes to people. Um, he's here to protect his group, so he doesn't really like to sort of let his guard down around us too much. So he'll kind of come over, say hello, but avoid avoid his gaze. So that's one of the kind of indicators of, of Lavar is that he's normally quite a serious chap. So even if he comes to the window, he'll often turn his back to you. So yeah, that's um, one of his traits. Like he demonstrated beautifully like he then. <laughs> Uh, who else have we got here? Who else could we be able to recognise? So we have just the one adult female in the group at the moment, Zingu. Um, she's quite sort of dark in colouring. Um, she is the mother of Olivia and Layla in this group. She's a really, really great mum. Um, so they're often sort of hovering around her. Um, so yeah, she's, she's quite an attentive mum. Um, Layla's not long term two and Olivia's four. Um, so yeah, they're often that, that trio are often, often hanging out together. Um, and then as our little man Cosmo, he's three years old, um, so he's had a bit of a troubled time. Um, he was rejected by his mum, sadly, so he was Henry's here at the park. Um, he came along really well and actually sort of settled into Lavar's group really quickly. Um, Lavar is really great with the kids, um, so even though he's not actually um, Cosmo's dad, he really took him under his wing and at the moment we're really seeing those two spending a lot of time together, it's quite sweet. Um, yeah, the, the boys could actually be much nicer to these sort of young youngsters than, than the other girls, so Lavar and Cosmo are often hanging out together, um, so we've got quite a sweet little little friendship going on. Absolutely. And we just had a few of the woolly calls then, can you explain to us what some of those calls and trills were and what they mean? Yeah, so the, the woolly monkeys have got quite a few different vocalisations. Um, a lot of those noises are just to communicate. So these guys in the wild, they might be in fairly large groups hanging out in fairly thick vegetation. So just to kind of keep in touch with each other throughout the day, they make a little yeah. sound to, and just to sort of chat. So we've got, yeah, the, the groups are all sort of within speaking distance of each other, if you like. Some of them actually know each other where we've done some little moves. So we, we often hear them sort of communicating, just little chip, little chirps, almost quite bird-like sounds, just like, yeah, <laughs> <it's flawed. laughs> um, And also when they're having something quite exciting, so a nice, nice snack, they make a sort of long trill sound. Um, so often if we start giving one group some nice treats, they start trilling and the other groups will respond because they know that they're going to get the treats soon after. So you can't really spoil one group and not all of the others because they tell. So yeah, it's a um, very nice, long, loud, happy call. Um, yeah, they're sort of always communicating with each other. So also, even if there's um, anything stressful has happened, maybe there's been a large bird of prey has flown over and they've got a little bit spooked, so they might start alarm calling, um, and that will indicate to the other groups that they may be a potential threat. So yeah, always keeping each other connected, even though they don't live together. So talking about uh, Zingu, Layla, and Olivia, some of our supporters have been asking about our group of woolly monkeys and their breeding and why we have done so well having so many babies. Yeah we've had massive success here at uh, Monkey World so we've, yeah, we've been 
we've been part of a European breeding pro program for over 20 years now. Um, they are, for some reason, they are an incredibly difficult primate to manage in captivity. Um, uh, you need to pay great amount of attention to their sort of their needs. Um, they're just very sort of sensitive, sensitive souls, I suppose you might say. So if they're not kind of managed in a certain way, with these nice, happy family groups, a really nice sort of environment for them to live in, and a, and a suitable diet, um, they just don't really seem to thrive. So. Um, yeah, we've just had a lot of success. We pay, and so by having the multiple groups like we do have, occasionally we've had to sort of maybe recreate a new group or just sort of move animals around and make sure everybody's kind of getting on and happy and just trying to sort of mimic as, as well as we possibly can sort of how these guys would sort of structure in their family life in the wild and try to, to do the same with our guys too. So the youngest woolly monkey at the park is Enya? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah's just turned one years old. Um she her mum is Pakaya, so they're down in our pond woolly group. Um yeah, she's an adorable little creature. Um her mum is quite feisty, very protective, so she's not really sort of too interested in coming too close to her keepers, but we're trying to gain a little bit of trust with her. Um but yeah, she's um, she's quite a sweet little lady. Um her dad is Enzo, um, and even though he's quite a, a sort of small male, sort of small in his structure. Um, he's yeah he's really kind of come on quite a lot um, in within within the group and the ladies really love him now so um, yeah and he is a daddy's girl spends a lot of time with him. Um, our supporters have also asked about the woolly monkey's fur, I guess what gives them the name the woolly monkeys, um, about how thick the coat is and if it's as soft as it looks. Yeah so the woolly monkey's coat is sort of fairly dense and soft and um, the, the we believe the purpose of this sort of thick woolly coat is actually they do live in fairly humid and wet environments um, some areas of the rainforest where there'll be quite large amounts of rainfall so this fur is actually fairly water repellent um, and in such a humid environment there are a lot of sort of biting bugs so that's why we believe that, that can actually protect them a little bit against that so yeah very soft and, and sort of fluffy so who have we got here on the fence so this is olivia zingu's oldest daughter She's four years old and um, she's had quite a bit of a growth spurt lately so she's looking in, in pretty good shape and um, she's starting to yeah, so develop into quite a nice female and um, her mum is pretty laid back um, and therefore Olivia has taken on those traits as well and um, spends a lot of time with her young sister Layla so she's just oh, here comes, <laughs> comes Olivia and Layla's just on the floor there so yeah Olivia is quite quite sweet she does um, we have quite a nice working relationship with her. She quite likes doing a little bit of training, so she's a very clever girl. Um, and yeah, Layla was quite nervous um, to start off with, but she's also becoming much more confident with us. I suppose where Zingu is such a good mum, they are quite <laughs> independent, are they? <laughs> yeah, the youngsters, um, their kind of personalities, are it comes to Layla as well, yeah. seem to reflect the, that of their parents. So if the, the mum is pretty laid back, then the, then the kids tend to be as well. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is there's quite a sort of nice laid back little little trio of ladies. And when would Olivia be considered adult? So in the wild, females do actually leave their families. So it's the males that tend to stay put. So they live in these large sort of multi male, multi female groups. Um, so from around sort of five, six years old is when a female might consider actually leaving home and, and joining another group. So they would sort of go out, explore a little bit. Um, it's not unusual for woolly monkey group territories to overlap slightly. Um, so yeah, they would sort of look at sort of kind of moving in somebody else's group at around six years old. Um, they start, yeah, that's when they start sort of reproducing. So yeah, from six years on is when they'll start having babies. So she's got a couple of years left with mum yet? Yeah, she's still sort of classed as an adolescent at this point. So she's like a little teenage girl. So she's learning a lot. She's starting to sort of lose that kind of babe, baby sort of behaviour and start to act a little bit more grown up now within the group. Lovely. Thank you very much, Sharon. Okay. Mm.